Welcome back to the video course on fluid mechanics. In the last lecture, we were discussing about the drag force and then lift force. We have seen various theories behind the drag force and various applications with respect to the drag force and then we are discussing about the lift force. So, as we discussed the lift force is the force exerted along the direction normal to the flow that is the lift force and we have also seen that say some cases like say air foil or the aeroplane is concerned lift is very much essential and we are looking to get better lift, but some say cases like the design of a, of a car or auto the design of a bus we are trying to reduce the lift. So, depending upon the case we will be trying to increase or decreasing the lift. So, that way we have to see that which way we have to plan uh, whether uh, say which way we have to use uh, design in such a way that lift should be to generate lift or to uh, reduce the lift. So, that we have to see the case. So, as I mentioned say for uh, an aircraft is concerned you can see that um, the thrust is in this direction and drag is here and then weight of the aircraft and lift is in this direction which is say here we are generating this lift so that the aircraft is going up and flying. Uh, but as far as car is concerned you can see that um, since um, with respect to the lift the efficiency of the vehicle will be reduced so we want to uh, reduce the lift. So, as we discussed earlier also, so the lift force we, uh, we can calculate say with respect to the uh, shear stress and the pressure force. So, if we consider an elemental area like this and then if the pressure is acting uh, P into D A in this elemental area like this and then it has got two components one is P D A sin theta in this the horizontal direction P D A cos theta in the vertical direction and then shear stress is also concerned we have tau 0 D A cos theta in the horizontal direction and tau 0 D A sin theta in the vertical direction. So, that for this elemental area the lift will be DFL is equal to tau 0 D A sin theta minus P D A cos theta where theta is this angle here. So, now say for the body is concerned we can integrate with respect to the area. So, that the total lift force will be equal to integral upon area A tau 0 D A sin theta minus integral upon area A P D A cos theta. So, this is the uh, general expression for the lift force which we generally use in the, in the calculations and the, for the design purpose. And then uh, generally the lift is concerned we can represent in terms of a say coefficient it is called a coefficient of lift. Coefficient of lift is uh, defined as the ratio of the lift force divided by and this uh, half rho u infinity square into a where this u infinity is the free stream velocity and uh, a is the area of the, of the body area which we consider and rho is the uh, density. So, coefficient of lift is equal to lift force f l divided by half u infinity square into a where u infinity is the free stream velocity. And then say we can see that this lift coefficient is a dimensional form of lift and then this uh, as we discussed in the case of drag lift coefficient or lift force also depends upon the shape of the body and uh, then uh, various uh, fluid flow parameters like Reynolds number, Mach number, Froude number and also the surface roughness of the of the body which we consider. So, the lift coefficient here is a function of shape of the body, the Reynolds number of the flow, Mach number of the flow, the fruit number and the surface roughness ratio is epsilon by L. So, where epsilon is the surface roughness. So, out of this we can see that uh, most important parameter is generally the shape. So, in the case of drag also we have seen the effect of the shape as far as drag coefficient or the drag force is considered. Similar, similarly, here the lift force is also considered. We can see that shape is very important. So, and then uh, with respect to the, the earlier expression which we have seen for the lift force we can see that most lift comes from the pressure force and not from the viscous force. So, the major component here you can see this in this expression this term P d A cos theta is the major contributor as far as the lift force is concerned and uh, shear stress tau 0 d s and theta component is a small part as far as lift is concerned. So, we have to create or to generate lift we have to see that uh, there is a pressure difference between the top of the body which we consider and bottom of the body. So, so that uh, lift, lift is generated 
expected or if we want to reduce the lift so accordingly we have to see. So, and then importance of shear stress or pressure effects depends upon the uh, Reynolds number. So, we have seen that here the lift uh, coefficient is a function of shape Reynolds number, Mach uh, number, fruit number and uh, epsilon the surface reference, but you can see that um, the important parameters here is the Reynolds number, Mac number and fruit number as we have seen in the case of uh, drag force or uh, drag coefficient the effect is small, but uh, Reynolds number uh, is uh, another important factor or important parameter here. So, depending upon whether the flow is laminar or turbulent or say when the Reynolds number is increasing or decreasing we can see that uh, the lift force uh, changes. So, now as far as lift force is concerned we can say design devices to produce lift as we have seen in the case of as we can see in the case of an aircraft. So, so that lift is generated so that a pressure distribution that is different on top and bottom. So, if you consider say for example, an airfoil here. So, lift will be say we can generate lift by having a pressure difference on the top and the bottom. So, in a very similar way we can see that aircraft is concerned with the wings of the aircraft there will be a pressure difference and then we can and generate the lift and then for larger Reynolds number of flows the pressure distributions directly proportional to the dynamic pressure. So, when the Reynolds number is increasing that means uh, when the flow become turbulent then we can see that the pressure distribution is generally uh, proportional to the dynamic pressure or uh, rho u square by 2 and uh, then uh, say depending upon this the this factor rho u square by 2 the the lift generator or the coefficient of lift will be changing. And then also another important thing is that which we can observe say for example, with respect to this airfoil or most of the other designs say most lift producing objects will be non symmetrical or we have to design such a way that this non symmetry or the the object is shape or the it is a design in such a way that it is not symmetrical. So, that way say more lift will be uh, generated. So, uh, this is a typical case is this airfoil when we put it at an angle of attack we can see that the lift will be more. So, some of the other practical examples as far as lift is concerned we can see many real uh, life cases. And we can observe the phenomenon lift. So, say for example, when we spin the spherical ball in the case of cricket, golf, table tennis, etcetera, uh, lift will be generated. So, this we will be discussing later, say which is the effect so called uh, Magnus effect, we will be discussing later. And then, uh, of course, the flying of aircraft, which is we can see observe in the case of an airfoil, say, and then a projectile motion, and even uh, say in the case of swimming. So, while swimming in this direction, you can see that some lift will be generated from the bottom due to the, the pressure differences. So, like this we can have number of examples real life examples where this lift is very important as I mentioned some cases we want to generate the lift. So, that um, it will be useful in the, in the application of that particular type of problem just like in the case of aircraft or um, in some cases we want to reduce the lift effect. So, that um, we will have a smooth operation say for example, uh, with the movement of a car. So, you can see that when our lift is generated the efficiency will be reduced. So, that um, we want to reduce the lift effect on the car. So, like this number of examples we can have as far as lift is concerned. So, now before further discussing the lift effect with respect to the flow surrounding a cylinder or a airfoil, we will just briefly discuss another important uh, parameter called the circulation. So, uh, the circulation effect we have discussed earlier when we uh, say discussed about the potential flow in the, in the earlier lectures, but uh, here with respect to the lift is concerned uh, we will be discussing more about the uh, circulation. So, as far as uh, circulation is concerned um, say it is uh, generally viewed as a mathematical concept and um, the circulation is the uh, line integral of the tangential component of the velocity around a closed fluid particle 
path. So, you can see that um, if we consider a fluid particle path like a closed fluid particle path like this defined by this uh, curve C and then uh, and the circulation is the line integral of the tangential component of the velocity. So, the tangential component of the velocity we here around the closed fluid particle path. So, actually the circulation is a real physical quantity and then if you can measure the velocity component or with respect to the measured data, we can calculate the circulation. So, this circulation is as you can see it is a, it is a measure of the swell of the fluid flow. So, the circulation is coming from the rotational effect or the say with respect to the here you can see that um, the we are considering a closed fluid pa particle path. So, it is generally considered as the measure of the swell of the fluid flow. So, and it represents it represents the net vorticity in an area bounded by any closed path of the uh, fluid particle. So, mathematically the circulation we can write as mathematically the circulation can be represented as gamma is equal to capital gamma is equal to the integral over the curve C V dot d s. So, where d s is the incremental arc length of a closed curve C as uh, described in this figure. So, the mathematical expression uh, for the circulation is capital gamma is equal to the um, integral over the curve C V dot d s where v is this in this as we discussed v is the velocity the tangential component of the velocity as uh, shown here in this figure. So, now with respect to this the definition of the circulation. So, as we have seen in the case of potential flow when we discussed about the potential flow. So, if we consider the flow as irrotational. So, as far as irrotational flow is concerned uh, we can see that uh, we can write the velocity common v is equal to del phi. So, here this v is equal to del phi and therefore, v dot d s is equal to del phi dot d s and that is equal to d phi. So, that we can write therefore, this circulation gamma is equal to integral over the closed path curve c d phi. So, we can see that this is equal to 0 for irrotational flow. So, generally we can say that as far as irrotational flow is concerned the circulation will be 0. But uh, you can see that as far as the uh, the circulation is uh, concerned uh, within that closed curve which we uh, consider if there are singularities uh, enclosed within the curve then circulation uh, may not be 0. So, if you consider say for example, the circulation around the circular path say if you consider as far as here is concerned you can see that if you consider closed circular path like this then you can see that here we will be having a free vortex v theta is equal to k by r where k is a constant and the circulation around the circular path of radius r for this case will be gamma is equal to integral 0 to 2 pi k by r r d theta where r is this radius defined here and theta is this angle and um, d s is on this and uh, here. Uh, so, gamma is equal to you can see that it is uh, 2 pi k. So, where k is a constant. So, here you can see that um, even though here uh, what we consider is um, rotational flow and potential flow, uh, but whenever there is a singularity or if singularities are there uh, within that closed curve, then you can see that uh, circulation will not be 0. So, we get a value for circulation gamma is equal to 2 pi k. So, this way we can see that um, this uh, whatever we have discussed as far as circulation is concerned say with respect to the lift uh, coefficient or lift uh, of the on, on the body. We will just discuss now how the circulation effect will be coming. We will discuss with respect to the case of a rotating cylinder. So, now, let us compute the uh, lift uh, for the case of a flow over a rotating cylinder. So, here we can see here the, the cylinder is here the cylinder is of radius r and it is rotating and then a free stream velocity free stream flow is coming free stream velocity of v is in this direction. So, now this cylinder is also rotating in this direction. So, for this case by let us assume the flow to be 
uh, say the potential flow, so that we can apply the Bernoulli's equation between any point in the unaffected flow region that means this region and any point on the surface of the cylinder, say particular point we consider on the cylinder and then uh, between uh, we will consider the pressure difference between any point on, on this fluid that means outside unaffected flow region and any point on the surface of the cylinder. So, this case, so the pressure at any point on the cylinder uh, we can derive as P is equal to P0 plus half rho V square minus half rho small v square where rho P0 is the pressure in the uniform flow region at some distance ahead of the cylinder and small v is the velocity at the cylinder periphery and capital V is the free stream velocity. So, we can write the pressure at any point on the cylinder here at any particular point P. So, if we consider the P0 as the pressure outside the cylinder which is not affected, so that we can see here say P is equal to P0 plus half rho capital V square minus half rho small v square where capital V is the free stream velocity and small v is the velocity at the cylinder periphery. So, now say we have seen the circulation aspect earlier. So, from the principle of circulation we can write we can see that the velocity on the periphery that means the velocity on the cylinder periphery we can write as V is equal to 2 capital V sin theta plus this gamma circulation divided by 2 pi r. So, this we can get from the principle of circulation. So, here this is the case we consider this is the rotating cylinder and the free stream velocity or free stream flow with the velocity capital V is this direction. So, the circulation around the cylinder when we consider we can write the velocity at the cylinder periphery v is small v is equal to 2 v 2 capital V sin theta plus gamma by 2 pi r. So, now if we use this expression in the previous expression which we, we have seen here p is equal to p 0 plus half rho p square minus half rho small v square. So, if you use this then we get the pressure difference delta p is equal to p minus p 0 is equal to half rho v square half rho capital V square minus half rho into 2 v sin theta plus gamma by 2 pi r all square. So, where small v we, we substituted for this small v here which is equal to 2 capital V sin theta plus gamma by 2 pi r in this expression. So, we get the pressure difference uh, delta p is equal to p minus p 0 that is equal to half rho v square minus half rho into 2 v sin theta plus gamma 2 pi r all square. Now, the lift d f l on an elementary surface area of the cylinder. So, if you consider in the previous figure here if you consider the elemental surface area then we can get this d f l can be written as d f l is equal to minus l r d theta delta p sin theta. So, this l r where l is the length of the cylinder. So, r is the radius of the cylinder l r d theta is the elementary surface area and uh, we can we will get the lift on the elementary area as d f l is equal to minus l r d theta delta p sin theta. So, we can see here with respect to this figure if we consider this elemental area and we get the as far as lift is concerned we get the expression as d f l is equal to minus l r d theta into delta p sin theta. So, here this negative sign is because of the pressure force always act towards the surface and sin theta is always positive. So, finally, if we integrate the lift force f l is equal to minus integral 0 to 2 pi l r d theta delta p sin theta. So, we get the lift force on the um, rotating cylinder f l is equal to minus integral 0 to 2 pi l r d theta delta p sin theta. So, this delta p we have already seen the value of delta p here. So, delta p is already defined here and then substituting for delta p and simplifying the lift force can be written as as follows f l is equal to rho v l into gamma. So, where the lift force on the cylinder f l is equal to rho v uh, L gamma where rho is the density of the fluid capital V is the free stream velocity L is the length of the cylinder and uh, gamma is the capital gamma is the circulation. So, this expression is called the Kutta-Juwoski equation.
So, this uh, say expression are independently derived by Kutta and Jaworski and uh, this expression is called uh, the circulation with respect to circulation here the lift force on the cylinder equal to rho v l gamma. So, this Kutta Jaworski equation is uh, one of the important equation and uh, Kutta and Jaworski independently showed that for a body of any shape in two dimension flow the transverse force per unit length is rho v gamma where v is the free stream velocity and uh, gamma is the circulation and rho is the density of the fluid and this force is perpendicular to the direction of uh, v. So, this is one of the important expression as far as this lift is concerned and then we can see that um, this kutta jaworski equation has got number of applications like in the ship propulsion and like that we can see many applications in the case of mechanical engineering also. So, kutta jaworski equation is one of the important equation and uh, this gives an expression for the, the lift force. So, as we have seen here in the previous slide lift force is equal to rho v l t. So, if we consider unit length for we have seen here for the case of a rotating cylinder, but um, they have shown that the body of any shape and this equation is varied if we consider a two dimensional flow. So, that lift force is given as rho v gamma where rho is the density of fluid capital V is the free stream velocity and uh, gamma is the uh, circulation. So, this kutta jaworski equation is one of the important equation and number of applications are there. And another important aspect with respect to this circulation and lift force is called the Magnus effect. So, here if you consider um, either a rotating ball or a rotating cylinder like this and a free stream flow is coming like this. So, this lift effect which is which we have discussed earlier. So, if there is circulation imposed upon a cylinder placed in uniform flow, it experiences a force that is a lift force. So, this phenomenon of lift was first investigated by Heinrich Magnus in 1852 and uh, this say effect is called a Magnus effect. So, the free stream flow is coming and uh, if there is a circulation for the circular cylinder as we can see. So, this effect is called a Magnus effect and then um, uh, this has also has got number of applications. So, say for example, if you consider say either a cricket ball or tennis ball and then uh, say if there is no spin, if the ball is not spinning it we are just uh, throwing like this, just uh, throwing without spinning then you can see that the effect is shown in this figure here. There is um, say there is no spin, so you can see that the body the, the, the ball is going like this, but you can see that um, if there is a spin that means you are also while the while it is throwing or if there is a flow and then also you are spinning the ball then you can see that there will be a lift effect. There will be a lift effect that is called the Magnus effect. You can see that here it is shown in this figure here. So, this is the ball and it is also rotating or it is spinning. So, that whenever it moves you can see that this so called Magnus effect is there. So, this is this effect is very important you can see that when we play either cricket or tennis or golf or any of where we use balls like this you can see that while throwing the ball or while batting the ball if say a spinning is also provided then you can see that uh, there will be lifting effect other than the uh, movement of the, the ball due to the spinning. So, the so called Magnus effect is very important we have to consider and this effect in uh, many cases like um, when we play cricket or the when we play tennis uh, like that say the the spinning effect has got a lift effect on the board. So, that is very important in many of the problems. So, we have to consider this Magnus effect. So, now we have seen the lift force and lift coefficient with respect to the the um, circulation and also we have seen the the Magnus effect. And now, 
say with respect to this um, the circulation effect when we consider the lift coefficient we can write CL is equal to the lift force by area divided by half rho v square. So, now if we consider the circulation also then we can write this FL is equal to rho v L gamma where V is the free stream velocity and L is the length of the cylinder which we consider and uh, gamma is the circulation. So, this area is concerned if we consider a cylinder you can see that it will be 2 R L. So, rho V L gamma by 2 R L divided by half rho V square. So, that is equal to gamma by R V. So, this is the lift coefficient C L and now uh, this is equal to this is also equal to now if you substitute for this gamma as say with respect to the earlier discussion with respect to earlier discussion we can write gamma is also equal to 2 pi r v c where this um, small v c is the velocity on the periphery of the cylinder. So, 2 pi r v c by r v. So, this is equal to 2 pi into v c by capital V where capital V is the free stream velocity. So, finally, the lift coefficient we can show that it is a ratio it is um, proportional to the, the velocity at the periphery of the cylinder divided by free stream velocity. So, C L is proportional to V C by capital V. So, this V C by V is the, the ratio it is the ratio which affects the location of the stagnation point at the lower portion of the cylinder. So, C L is a function of V C by V or it is proportional to V C by V. So, now you can see that when we analyze various cases when this V C by V is equal to 2 you can see that the stagnation point meet at the bottom of the cylinder as in this case here which is the limiting condition for this case. So, we have already seen this V C that means the velocity on the periphery of the cylinder V C is equal to 2 V sin theta and uh, this will be maximum when theta is equal to 90 degree. So, if theta is equal to 90 degree we can write V C is equal to 2 into V. So, hence we can write coefficient of lift which we discussed C L here we have already discussed the C L will be equal to 2 pi 2 pi is the here we have seen that 2 pi into V C by V. So, V C is equal to 2 V or V C by V is equal to. So, coefficient of lift is equal to 4 pi which is equal to 12.56 and this is the theoretical maximum possible value of lift coefficient say for the case which we consider as in the case of a rotating cylinder. So, like this for various other cases also we can check for the coefficient of lift with respect to the circulation effect. So, now we have seen the coefficient of lift and the circulation and the circulation effect on the lift force is concerned and uh, we have seen the case for the circular cylinder. So, uh, before further we discuss the case of an airfoil and its lift effect with respect to the circulation we will just uh, discuss a small example here. So, the example problem is a cylinder 1.4 meter of diameter is rotated about its axis in air having a velocity of 118 kilometer per hour, a lift of 4686 Newton per meter length of the cylinder is developed on the body. Assuming ideal fluid flow theory find A the rotating speed and B the location on the stagnation point and the fluid density is given rho is equal to 1.24 kilogram per meter cube. So, now the problem here is we have got a rotating cylinder and um, the diameter of the cylinder is 1.4 meter as shown in this figure and the free stream velocity is the which is air flow the free stream velocity is 118 kilometer per hour and it is observed that uh, the lift force is 4686 Newton in this direction. So, we have to find out the rotating speed of the this cylinder and the location of the stagnation point for the problem. So, now as we discussed earlier, so with respect to the figure we can use the kutta jewosk equation here. So, that a lift force is obtained as F L is equal to rho V L gamma. So, here this uh, already the lift force per uh, unit length is given us 4686 Newton per meter and um, rho is equal to 1.24 kilogram per meter cube. So, that we can 
get here this we can find out gamma. So, before finding circulation gamma we will convert this velocity free stream velocity in terms of meter per second. So, it is given us as in the previous case the air flow is 118 kilometer per hour. So, if we convert it into meter per second 118 into 1000 by 3600 meter per second that is equal to 32.78 meter per second. So, now if we use this relationship F L is equal to rho V L gamma, so that we will get 4686 is equal to 1.24 into 32.78 into circulation gamma, so that we get the circulation gamma is equal to 115.28 meter square per second. Um, but also we can see that in the case of a circular cylinder like this, gamma is equal to uh, the velocity on the periphery V C into 2 pi r. So, and also we can see that um, V c is equal to r into omega, where the omega is the revolutions per minute r p m of the of the with respect to the say the omega is the angular velocity. So, with respect to the r p m. So, V c is equal to we can write r omega, where omega is the angular velocity. So, that is equal to 2 pi r n by 60, where n is the r p m revolutions per minute. So, that finally, we get gamma is equal to 2 pi r all square into n by 60. So, from which we can find out this number of revolutions per minute n is equal to 357.57 rpm revolutions per minute. So, this gives the speed of the cylinder. So, now the second part of the question is we have to find out the stagnation point. So, here for this problem here we want to get the location of stagnation point. So, we have already found the uh, rotating speed. So, if we put the force to find out the stagnation point, we can see that the velocity on the periphery should be equal to 0. So, we can write V c is equal to 2 V sin theta plus gamma by 2 pi r, the circulation by 2 pi r that should be equal to 0. So, here this r is equal to d by 2 that is equal to 0.7 meter. So, that we can write this expression we can equate to 0. So, 2 into 32.78 sin theta plus 115.28 which is the circulation we have already calculated divided by 2 pi into 0.7 that is equal to 0. So, that finally, we get sin theta value is minus 0 0.3998. So, theta is equal to minus 23.56 degree or 203.56. So, like this, this is a simple example like this various other problems we can solve. So, by considering the problem with the circulation, same we have to uh, get the, consider the circulation effect and then we have to use the Uta Jivoski equation which we have derived earlier. So, this is the case the lift force and uh, the um, effect on of circulation on the lift force. So, we have seen with respect to this example. So, now we will discuss in detail uh, about the lift effect on an airfoil. So, uh, let us consider the lift on an airfoil. So, if you consider an airfoil like this in this slide, you can see that the airfoil is oriented like this. So, there is the alpha is the angle of attack and if you consider C as the code length and uh, you can see that the lift force effect is coming like this. So, uh, if we use the kutta equation we can write say if circulation is also considered we can write F L is equal to rho L V gamma where gamma is the circulation that is equal to pi C into V sin alpha where alpha is the angle of attack and C is the code length and V is the free stream velocity. So, that finally, we can write the lift force as far as this airfoil is concerned, we can write F L is equal to rho L V into pi C V sin alpha. So, that is equal to pi C into rho L V square sin alpha, where C is the code length for the considered airfoil. So, now, we generally express the lift effect with respect to the coefficient of lift. So, we will write the lift effect on the airfoil as the coefficient of lift. So, that we can write C L is equal to coefficient of lift is equal to F L the lift force by area divided by rho V square by 2. So, here for this airfoil is concerned A is equal to C into L, where C is the code length 
and uh, then we can write this can be put as. So, we have already derived f l is equal to phi c rho l b square sin alpha. So, we can substitute back here and a is here we can put it back and finally, we will get the coefficient of lift for the airfoil as 2 pi sin alpha. So, here we have derived the, uh, the coefficient of lift for the airfoil. So, by considering the lift. So, here you can see that this only uh, the coefficient of lift is only a function 2 pi is 2 and pi are constant. So, only it is a function of the angle of attack. So, whenever you can see that um, this airfoil is placed in such a way that this alpha is equal to 0, then you can see that the coefficient of lift will be 0. So, lift will be also 0. So, to generate lift we have to keep this at some angle. So, this angle of attack is the most important parameter as far as the airfoil is considered here. So, with respect to the airfoil which we analyzed just now and we can see the important parameters or the important factors affecting the lift are the lift force on an airfoil is dependent upon the cross section uh, shape of the airfoil. So, what is the shape of the airfoil which way we designed the airfoil and then of course, the most important parameter is the angle of attack and then the plant form uh, size of the wing. So, if we consider the aircraft then with respect to the airfoil which we discussed. So, how we put the wing such a way that the plant form size of the wing. So, that has an, another important effect with respect to the lift and then uh, of course, uh, the density of the air. So, since uh, we have seen that the kutta equation which we have seen earlier, you can see that uh, FL is equal to uh, rho L V gamma. So, this depends upon the density of the air and the velocity of the flight through the air. So, these are some of the important parameters or the which, uh, which affect the lift. So, if you want to optimize the lift so, say for the maximum lift as far as the aircraft is concerned, we have to design in such a way that the shape of the airfoil should be optimized and then the angle of attack whenever the aircraft is flying, then the angle of attack should be in such a way that it will get a maximum lift and then the plant form size and then other important parameters are the density of the air and then of course, the velocity of the, the air. So, based upon these parameters, we can optimize the design in such a way that we get the best effect as far as lift is concerned. So, now through experiments, we, we can conduct various experiments in the laboratory and then we can observe the effect of this um, angle of attack on the say for example, the case of an airfoil. So, if you plot the angle of attack on the x axis and then if you plot the coefficient of drag and coefficient of lift on the y axis, then you can see that this um, as far as coefficient of lift is concerned, you can see that it is um, going like this say um, whenever um, say here starting from this value it is going like this, it is increasing, keep on increasing. So, actually even the theoretical coefficient of lift is 2 pi sin alpha which represent this line, but um, reality will be you can see that it will be coming like this and then we reach a maximum point or the point of maximum lift where we define a point called star point and then it reduces. So, similarly the draft coefficient you can see that it is going like this. So, this with respect to this, so various this plot we can obtain through various experiments by placing the airfoil at different angles and then we can get the, uh, we can plot the coefficient of drag and coefficient of lift. So, now as far as the lift on the airfoil is concerned, say the efficiency of the airfoil you can see that um, is obtained as a ratio of coefficient of lift to coefficient of drag. So, you can see that to much higher compared to the rotating cylinder. So, the rotating cylinder which we have discussed earlier if you compare with respect to the airfoil which we discussed now you can see that here C L by C D will be much higher and uh, at high angles of attack in the case of airfoil we can see that even best shape airfoil is subjected to separation near leading edge. So, due to the say when the angle of attack is higher then you can see that say there will be separation near the leading edge and when this happens it is followed by rapid drop in the 
lift drag ratio and this condition is called as stall. So, here you can see that whenever we keep on increasing the angle of attack. So, initially the lift is coefficient lift is increasing and then it reaches a maximum point and then you can see that after this uh, there is a sudden drop as far as coefficient of lift is concerned and this location this condition is called as stall. So, where the rapid drop in lift uh, drag ratio takes place. So, now say with respect to this whatever we have discussed uh, is say uh, how the angle of attack is important as far as the uh, design of the airfoil and now uh, we have seen that when it reaches say we cannot keep the angle of attack to uh, say after certain limit it uh, the coefficient of lift is decreasing which we have seen the as the condition as star. Now, uh, let us discuss more about the circulation effect as far as airfoil is concerned. So, uh, we have already seen the, the angle of attack effect as far as the airfoil is concerned. So, but from the theories uh, we can see that for ideal fluid flow past an airfoil as per lift theory the calculated lift for an airfoil for non-zero angle of attack actually theory says the theory gives as zero the say the calculated lift will be zero, but in reality you can see that lift is uh, produced. So, in reality the flow should pass smoothly over the top surface as uh, below. So, you can see that uh, airfoil is placed here even uh, at an angle of attack there should be smooth uh, flow over the top surface and like this. But um, say this should be the condition, but you can see that due to the angle of say when we keep it as at an angle or the non-zero angle of attack, you can see here, uh, but the actual flow is like this. So, you can see that um, if this is the leading edge and airfoil is placed at an angle of attack and then you can see that uh, here the streamlines are plotted. So, here this trailing edge is concerned uh, there is same there is disturbance takes place at the trailing edge and um, then same the actually due to the angle of attack here actually what happens is there is a circulation is produced. So, we can explain this lift effect the as we have seen that theoretically there should not be any lift, but actually lift is happening for the case of an airfoil placed at an angle of attack. So, this we can explain with respect to the swirling flow around the airfoil. So, you can see that um, since the airfoil is placed at an angle of attack then say as described in the figure here the, this um, at the trailing edge then the stream if you plot the streamline then you can see the disturbance takes place and then a uh, third takes place with respect to the airfoil. So, this adding of this third eliminates the unrealistic behavior near the trailing edge. So, this phenomena of the lift with respect to the airfoil uh, we can explain with respect to this swirl effect or the circulation effect. So, the average velocity on the upper surface is increased on the lower surface is say average velocity on the upper surface is increased then in the lower surface say the effect is taking place and as per the Bernoulli's equation we can see that the pressure at the upper surface is decreased and at lower surface is increased. So, the average velocity on the upper surface is increased and the lower surface it is decreased and similarly the pressure at the upper surface is decreased and at the lower surface it is increased. So, that is with respect to the swirl effect and the net effect is to change the original zero lift condition to that of a lift producing airfoil. So, this is the way which we can explain and what is really happening with respect to say when the airfoil is placed with respect to an angle of attack. So, if you consider the swirling effect with respect to the angle of attack, then we can see that um, say the velocity on the upper surface will be increased and then the lower surface will be decreased and similarly the pressure at the upper surface is decreased and at the lower surface is increased. So, finally, this, this effect the net effect is a change in the original zero lift condition and then lift is produced as far as the airfoil is concerned. So, this effect we can explain with respect to this figure here. So, this clockwise cell is actually the circulation which we discussed earlier. So, um, uh, if you consider say here the airfoil at an angle of attack and the free stream velocity is coming. So, here this disturbance takes place at the trailing edge and then if you 
add this the circulation effect or the swirl effect which we have discussed here. So, here this is the airfoil with respect to the, the flow and the disturbance and then plus so here this effect of circulation takes place and finally the resultant flow is same with respect to the finally if you add together then the resultant flow will be like this and then finally we can see that lift is produced. So, here um, say even though theoretically as far as airfoil is concerned there may not be lift, but uh, practically what happens is that say this at the trailing edge the disturbance takes place and finally, we will be considering the, the circulation effect and then finally, the flow will be like this. So, this way we can explain the lift effect coming on an airfoil. So, this effect of circulation around the airfoil, so you can see that the average pressure on the lower surface is greater than that on the upper surface and this pressure difference will cause some of the fluid to attempt to migrate from the lower to the upper surface. And finally, a trailing vortex will be formed from each wing tip. So, if we consider the aircraft wing, then what happens is that, so this due to this pressure difference, then um, some of the fluid will be migrating to from the lower to the upper surface and then finally, trailing vortex will be formed from each wing tip and then the trailing vortices are connected by the bound vortex along the length of the wing. So, here you can see that uh, the vortex how it is generated with respect to circulation. So, here this is the wing of the aircraft then you can see that um, the free stream the air flow is in this direction and uh, here you can see the formation of the bound vortex and then also you can see that a trailing vortex will be formed at the at the uh, this is the trailing vortex here and this location this is the trailing vortex and similar way this this side also and finally the bound vortex generates the circulation that produces the lift effect as far as the uh, aircraft wing is concerned so this we can show with respect to the airfoil theory airfoil the lift on the airfoil and the circulation effect uh, which we have discussed earlier. So, now if you consider instead of the airfoil, if you consider the circulation around a circular cylinder which we discussed earlier, then you can see that this is the cylinder here and then the free stream velocity is coming and if you plot the streamlines. So, flow without circulation will be like this that means the cylinder is not rotating. So, here if you the flow without circulation is going like this, but if the cylinder is also rotating that means flow with the circulation is you can see that what is the effect happening here. You can see the changes in the pattern of the streamlines and this uh, figure is taken from this website here put here. So, the circulation around a circular cylinder without circulation that means here there is no circulation effect and uh, flow with the circulation. So, the magnitude of the lifting force per unit length of the cylinder as we have discussed F L is equal to rho V gamma where gamma is the circulation and rho is the density of the fluid V is the uh, free stream velocity uh, and uh, say for no slip boundary condition we, as we have discussed gamma is equal to integral V d L uh, which results in gamma is equal to V into 2 pi r where V is the velocity at a point on the surface and r is the radius of cylinder and finally, we can write F L is equal to rho V 2 pi omega r square as V is equal to omega r, r where omega is the angular velocity and r is the radius of the uh, cylinder. So, this effect we can see here. So, uh, so far we have seen the lift force and the coefficient of lift and then the importance of circulation. So, we have seen in the case where if, if a cylinder is rotating or if not rotating what are the effects that means with respect to circulation the flow and with respect to circulation and um, also we have seen an airfoil with uh, say zero angle of attack there is no lift effect but when there is an angle of attack is there then there is lift effect is there so that uh, what is the theory behind that we have discussed and also we have seen the various aspects like you know, Magnus effect that means when we say spin a ball say say for example, the case of cricket when we spin the ball and then 
or 10 knees when we spin the ball, then what will be the effect? There will be a lift effect and then it will be due to the spinning effect and the lift effect it will be very difficult to predict which direction the ball will be moving. So, that is the effect of this the rotating or spinning effect or the so called circulation effect as far as lift is concerned. So, with this this chapter same we are closing this chapter on the boundary layer theories and drag and lift effect. Uh, to summarize, so in this chapter uh, we have initially discussed the uh, various uh, the kinds of external flows uh, and then we are differentiated with respect to the internal uh, flows and then also we have seen the, uh, the boundary layer formation, boundary layer theories, uh, Prandtl's and Karman's theory and then also uh, various solutions with respect to uh, the boundary layer theories. Um, say for various parameters uh, like um, the shear stress and then the velocity as various locations and then the uh, say we have also seen that the boundary layer is concerned uh, say with respect to the flow over a flat plate we have seen initially it may be laminar and then that will be a transition and then finally turbulent stage is achieved. So, uh, all this with respect to the boundary layer theory we have discussed and also the boundary layer separation and wake formation also uh, we have discussed uh, in this chapter and also in the, uh, the theory behind the drag and lift we have discussed in detail and the drag force and then coefficient of drag and then and to calculate this drag force and uh, coefficient of drag for various cases whenever the uh, flow is laminar or the boundary layer is laminar or boundary layer is turbulent and uh, also uh, we have seen uh, its importance of the, the importance of drag as far as say in the, in the design of various um, uh, say various problems like uh, automobile industry in the design of cars or the design of uh, say bus or various other kinds of design and then uh, uh, in this lecture we have discussed the the lift force and then uh, the coefficient of lift and the, the the circulation effect as far as uh, lift is concerned so with this this um, uh, the external flows here we have discussed and now uh, in the final chapter we will be discussing the the internal flows or the pipe flow that we will be discussing in the uh, next lecture.